Hey, what's up? Ron here. In today's video, I want us to do some fun pencil and pen sketches of figures. And because I've been focusing a lot on anatomy recently and really analyzing the shapes, this time I'm going to go the other way around and really focus on just sketching it as I see it. And you will get to see how some of that anatomical knowledge goes into uh, what I'm doing. So I'm kind of guessing where things are. Sometimes I'm succeeding, sometimes not as much, but, but this understanding does feed into what you're doing, but you can set it aside and just sketch from observation and have fun. So I want us to get through quite a lot of these. Let's get to it. So we will get started with this one that is relatively uh, simple, not easy, <laughs> but simple, just because there's, it's more focused on one part of a person. And I like to uh, try and go for these. Uh, this is actually very applicable to watercolor. Uh, where it's really important to simplify um, a lot of scenes and very often we have a tendency to go for something that's too hard. Uh, so anyway, the, the focus here is actually to have fun and sketch away. So I'm not going to go too deep into anatomy, but I will utilize a lot of gesture. So I am focusing on the movement. You see, there's no line that actually goes like that, but I recognize that it would look really good in terms of movement to get it like that. Uh, and so I do. Uh, and then focusing on the overall shapes, uh, the arm goes kind of in that direction. The sleeve ends around here. Head should be bigger, so um, yeah, somewhere around that area. Then goes down, uh, arm. You see, see this rounded line? Again, it's not as rounded in the reference photo, but I'm looking for these beautiful patterns to create gestures and then that hand here. And this is where uh, it's gonna differ from a lot of uh, my recent work where I'm just gonna switch over to the pen uh, very early on and, and just start filling in the details and have fun. So it's kind of utilizing both a um, more accurate sketching approach uh, that puts some emphasis on a bit of maybe anatomical knowledge and a bit of um, understanding of the human uh, anatomy, but then ultimately I'm kind of throwing that away and having fun. Um, and the, the, when you do this kind of a thing, you can never focus on the result. In fact, I'd much rather you don't focus on the results ever, but I mean, that's, uh, uh, I don't know how possible and practical that is for most people, but uh, when you're working that way, especially, uh, you have to kind of well, uh, immerse yourself in the process and um, just feel through it, I guess. I don't know exactly how to how else to describe it. Uh, I will say that there's a lot of things that are, I think are fun topics of conversation for this kind of a video and I'll try getting to some of them and if you have any questions you just let me know in a comment down below. But I definitely want to touch upon um, in terms of technique showing you some folds in, clo in, in the clothing items. Uh, and I'd actually also like to talk a bit about my process generally and where I'm at right now and kind of give you an update. So now I need to just make sure that this actually looks like uh, he's crossing his arms. Now I do have some anatomical knowledge, so I know how to approach this in a way that's a little more effective. For example, you have these two corners and then one actually underneath that I wasn't showing enough so that there is this kind of a triangle. It's very affected by how uh, your upper and, and lower arms interact. Um, so here it's folded and so you get that kind of a shape and then we'll put in a, a hint of some of the uh, fingers. Uh, and I find this way of sketching to be very fun and very freeing where you don't really, and I'm not doing enough of it at the moment because I've been going so deep into the anatomical end uh, that I, I, I indeed need a bit of that freedom and looseness just for fun and really um, feel that enjoyment. Now let's get something for the face here. There's the nose, then there's an eyebrow, and there's another eyebrow. We won't get anything close to a likeness here, but just for fun I can show you like, again, the thought process of putting in the eye sockets, and then inside of those you have to figure out exactly where the eye sits. You see, and you're not going to be perfect, but uh, if you come close that's nice. Then there's a bit of hair showing through there. Um, you see all of these folds and creases coming out of this pinch point there. So you have all of these lines leading to this imaginary pinch point. And then a cool thing to show is how the shape of that seam line follows the folds, you see, by being wavy. So that's a fun one that we did really fast. You see, really barely took any 
effort, and hopefully it does show like he's, it does appear as if he's crossing his arms, but that's a fun warm-up. We can move on to uh, another one, so let's see what we have here. Let's go for a bit of a more challenging one. So we have this woman here, and what I initially looked for is a lot of falls and creases that will look cool to uh, demonstrate. Let me move the camera. So yeah, I was looking for a lot of shapes that will be um, fun to show as a demo. Now when we're dealing with a complete figure, of course, uh, if I'm going for a more accurate anatomical representation, I'd, I'd take um, a few more precautions, but this is more about the sketching, so what I'm actually trying to figure out is the overall frame of things and the gesture, so how can I get as much of the information conveyed with a very simple sketch, look at this beautiful curve for the lower arm, and then the back this goes maybe around to here. We'll try getting something that kind of resembles her. And then the other arm here at the back. And then you see I'm kind of guesstimating because I don't really know where everything is. And again, I would have been a, been a little more careful if I tried to figure out the an anatomy behind the clothes, but it's something like that, and sorry you can't see the bottom lip, here we go, uh, but it wasn't anything important, and then one leg here, another there, and I allow myself to be a little sketchy here, and maybe the arm is a little too long, the other arm, you see, just a, just a curve to describe its overall movement, and then the head, and don't forget uh, the hair, just to indicate it, and maybe I'll bring in some indication. It's been a long time since I did just a fun sketching session like this. Kind of missed it. Let me turn on the air condition. If it will turn on for me. Uh, so yeah, it's been a while since I did this fun kind of a um, freer sketching action and um, and not just you know focusing on volumes and all of that good stuff. That is fun too. Um, but sometimes it's nice to kind of let loose and, you know, just go for it. So this will be approximately where the eyebrows are, then the eyes are going to fit under that, and then I can start filling in the blanks. So we'll grab a hold of maybe a smaller pen this time. Now let's see what we can do here. I'm going to start with the face, and again, when you're doing this directly with a pen, forget about <laughs> anything being perfect, forget about accuracy, what you're trying to do is maybe get a somewhat close feel to the to the subject um, and it's a lot of it is about the looseness now you know a lot of people and I myself included we talk about the speed of line and how it influences the quality of the work to be honest with you I'm playing around with doing slower more deliberate lines and still maintaining the flow so I do think it is possible uh, I definitely won't say it's not so you know, it's, it's about experimenting and getting to know yourself, right? Now here it's gonna get fun. So, and I barely put any indication for the clothes, but let's see what we can come up with. So this is where the sleeve is, kind of. This goes like that. And then we have all of these beautiful, actually I should stay with my smaller pen here. We have all of these beautiful creases and, you know, just fun stuff. And I actually wonder, do you uh, ever do these kinds of sketches? And what subject uh, do you use? Do you do with people or something else? I'm curious to know. So let me know in a comment down below. It's fun. I like this video to be kind of a format, almost like a live stream, but not really. Because uh, it's not live. Uh, but just a fun, the fun approach of it. And you'll notice there's this seam here. And that really captures a lot of the the cloth of the upper part so you get all of these you know shapes bunching up there this is a very fluffy sleeve uh, and this goes here and is pulled towards there a bunch of these shapes and you don't need to put all of them in you, you see if you just put a few indications it can look really good then let's get the arms shape to be somewhat correct and while I'm doing all of this I am applying my understanding of three-dimensional objects to it so even though I'm not indicating things as three-dimensional objects necessarily I am utilizing my understanding of it so I know that this arm moves very gently away from us towards this direction very gently uh, I know that the rib cage is probably to this direction because it's it's tilted backwards because that's just how we're we're built see it tilts back 
Uh, so it's, if we draw a line wrapping around it, it's that. And then I know that the pelvis goes the other way around, actually, like this. And the tilt is even more extreme uh, in some people. It varies a lot, but uh, I think here it's pretty extreme, you see? So I know to wrap it with this kind of a line. And that dictates uh, my approach. Um, but at the heart of, of it, you know, it's a combination. I'm combining these skills with uh, observing, uh, which is how I got started in drawing, is just by observing. I didn't go into any of the fancy anatomy and, and learning about these things, and it's super beneficial, right? Uh, but I think I also want to develop my uh, observational skills. So you see, there we go, and we got most of it in. It's not gonna be too fancy, but uh, try to get close, you know? Hands are always <laughs> a uh, point of frustration for many. I'm not gonna get too much in here, but I'll just put in some kind of an indication for the fingers. We'll see how it goes. See, just just to give you a feel. And then this curve shows that it's the inside of the uh, palm. The other one's much simple, actually, much simpler, actually. So it's gonna be something like this for the box, and then all the fingers are kind of headed in the same direction. So. It, it's not as important. If you want to put some details in, I wouldn't actually in this size, but let's take the risk and get a bit of a cringe looking face here. Um, I'm not going to go for anything that's similar to the reference. I'll just put in something. So eyes, maybe looking towards us. Then we have the eyebrows. That's just again, if you want to get some kind of an indication, then you can. Let's keep the mouth uh, kind of gentle. Um, and we got it, you know, it's just fun. A lot of mo motion and movement here in the falls increases. Uh, so very fun stuff. Let's move over to another one. And I, I like how this is a bit conversational. Um, I also wonder, let me know where you're from, kind of like we're doing in the chat. Let's just do something a little different. So here I have this kind of a knight armor. Let me move the camera. And what's fun about these is, again, you don't have to know too much about what's underneath it. You can kind of get away with just drawing the armor. Let's try, so with these especially, I like to put a, an envelope, like I learned from good old Proko. Put an envelope around it and kind of wrap the entire shape. So it's gonna be something like this, and then you can start figuring out the placement of things. So this is the arm. This is the head armor, and then we have this uh, kind of a chain mail, you call it, or is it chain link? No, it's just chain mail. And they're actually holding something, so here we go, and the rest of the body, and you can get away with doing very little here, just because it's, uh, it's, it's not, you know, it's not the anatomy, I'm just trying to place the paper where it makes sense. Um, a lot of it is just understanding basic three-dimensional shapes. And if you don't, it's gonna be a challenge, but if you do, it's much much simpler than uh, one would think, looking from the outside. Um, and I actually have enough to go off of. So let's get to it. I'm gonna keep uh, a thick pen for this one. Um, I'm gonna start inking fast, but we'll see. Maybe I'll slow down as this gets built up. Here we have this part that maybe swivels, right, around this axis. Goes down like that. And these are all actually things that if you draw enough of, you will commit them to your mental bank of ideas. And you can pull these things out. And I know because I don't think I have anything close to a photographic memory. I actually have a very hard time visualizing things. And it's, it's an interesting topic. I've watched a few videos on it. but. I almost never have a vivid image in my mind when it comes to these kinds of subjects or anatomy or stuff like that. Maybe with painting, I'm so proficient at it that, let me move this a bit. Maybe with painting, again, I'm so, uh, sorry for the shaking, as proficient at it that I am able to do it. Definitely not with uh, this kind of a more complex figure type of thing, um, but it does work, it does stay in your mind and then the next time you encounter it you're actually having an easier time um, pulling out something that you've had some prior information it's actually fascinating how that works 
so even if you think you're not one of the people who can do that, uh, there's a good chance you can and you just need to uh, do a lot of repetition. No, you don't have to, right? Uh, I'm just saying that if that's something you're interested in, uh, it's probably more possible than you think. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to keep this one simple. I mean, there's so much going on here. I can actually use this opportunity to show you how easy it is to create a sense of metal. Uh, so that could be fun. Let's do that. You'll see. Uh, it's, it's a thing I've been really enjoying doing uh, recently, to just try and convey uh, a sense of metal feel to stuff. Um, and all you really need is like a thick marker and you're good to go. It's really good for conveying leather um, and bright, not bright, but shiny, reflective surfaces, clothes, whatever it is. Now, you know, every fold has a name, so there are a lot of categories of them. Uh, but I don't even think it's that important to know the names of the folds. What's more important is understanding the logic behind them. And once you do, um, a lot of different opportunities open up to you to manipulate and and try and... Um, let's, let's get this in first. And try and invent, exaggerate. A lot of these options will open up to you, which is great fun too. These are kind of pipe folds. They go around like that. Um, but then we have this glove that I wanted to put in. Now notice the foreshortening. This is a little longer than this. This is really squeezed. The knuckles, you see, they're just reaching here. Like that. Because we're looking at his, his arm here is facing towards us. And that's something important to understand. This is the um, upper part of the arm. If it's a cylinder, it goes in this direction. Very, very gently, actually, but I exaggerated it a bit. And then the uh, lower part of the arm is really facing towards us. See? This part. Um, unlike this one that kind of is just facing maybe slightly... Really, almost we're looking at it straight ahead like this. The upper part is slightly tilted towards us. See? Here. Uh, but here it's really aimed towards us. So it's important to convey that and it will show in all of these details of the armor. You see, that's really important. All of these details will have a sense of that. And then the thumb, <laughs> clumsy uh, armor thumb. Now we're putting in the belt and as you're putting this kind of a detail, it's important to think about what it does to the thing underneath it. Here the effect isn't that significant, but very often you'll see that the cloth kind of it bunches it up like this, you see, and then it stretches out. So just something to have in mind, and I think we're pretty much done. Just a fun quick one. Uh, let me flip the page and we'll do another one. So actually for this next one, let's maybe put in a bit more effort into the anatomy and understanding it, just because we can and, and there is a lot more detail showing. So I'm gonna start with a basic gesture, but very fast, I'm gonna turn towards some volumes. But this is the upper arm. Then the lower arm, the distance, maybe somewhere around here is where it ends. Other arm coming from the other side, like that. And then torso, upper body. And again, I'm not going to go into too many anatomical details, but just enough to kind of understand where we're at. The jeans really meets the, the area of the head here, so, and the leg. The leg stretches beyond the arm, and then it goes back towards this area. And that's a good kind of starting point. You can measure how many heads from bottom to three, so about three, one, two, three, so we're kind of accurate. Maybe this should be a little lower, so that's one leg. A bit sketchy, but it does the job. And then the second one. The other one goes like that, and we kind of got the overall uh, pose, right? Now this should align here, so let's get rid of this lower section. Now we can start developing some volume. So for the head, we're going to cut a side plane, and then it's looking a little down, so it's going to look like something like that. The neck, and then the arm. It's moving towards us, actually. So we get this, and you can see the uh, deltoid muscle right around here. 
and you can see some of the triceps of course at the back of the hand these things help but again they're not a must I think it goes somewhere like that. I really need a refresher on the triceps uh, but yeah and then this goes here this part really has a boxy shape and then it connects to the box of the hand and the fingers and then this arm also really coming towards us like that and then we have the upper body and then we have this uh, serratus I think or the part of the back muscle not really sure what goes on there I really need a refresher but we definitely see the pecs here like that and I'm gonna flesh these things out more with the ink so don't worry if you don't have an idea what I'm talking about then they stretch and the jeans and some details and and yada yada and that the rest is really not that important so and I'm gonna actually maybe ignore the hair here just to show you to give you a better view so this will be the ear somewhere around here and this isn't easy because I'm just really going off of not a lot of details but I want to show you how it works when I try to peel off the layers and really see through uh, for example the hair here just to understand the orientation of the head so again it's looking down uh, it should actually be lower and the arm should obstruct more of it, but that's fine. We already made this mistake, so I'm just going to roll with it. Now you see this line here and then that line? That's created from the combination of, I believe, both there is the sternocleidomastoid muscle, but then also the shape of the trape trape trapezius muscles that goes from the back to the front. So there's actually a lot of complex things going on here. I'm not as interested in all of them, but just the few that will help us get things right so that's gonna be the front of the face and then I'm gonna go down with its shape and find a center line and then for these muscles I'm gonna have a very cylindrical shape here for the back of the arm and again it's moving towards us so this will wrap around it like that and then the uh, deltoids wrap around that they really stick out here and then we have another bump. I'm not sure if that's the, and it's too, a bit too exaggerated, but I'm not sure if that's the scapula muscles or not. Uh, you can let me know. I just don't remember. I'll have to do a refresher there. And then we have the obliques. And the fun part, the uh, pecs. We go like that. Stretch a bit. And, and the rest is obscured behind the leg. And then you see a bit of the abs. And that really folds because he's folded, right? He's leaning forward. Um, and then this is actually the easiest part because it's just the clothes, so we can kind of wing that. But the jeans, a lot of folds here in this area where he, the, the leg folds because a lot of cloth bunches up there. And then around the, this area is where the shoes are going to be. I'm not going to go into any detail on the shoes, actually, I think. But it's kind of like that. Maybe a bit of folds near that area because uh, some cloth does bunch up there. Don't forget the seam lines can really help show the different shapes by going wavy here. And then you see that go around all of these folds and creases and that's a really cool effect. Let's complete the arm. We have, um, as it straightens, these are aligned actually. I forgot the name, but the alacronon and the condyles, I think. And then the ridge muscles. And then it goes to here, kind of connects. This moves actually away from us. So this moves towards us and then it folds and moves away from us. Then we got this uh, simplified box. Show the boxy part of the hand and maybe an indication of a finger or two this arm comes from here after this one i'll check if there's anything else i want to show or where we can kind of move towards wrapping it up but again look at the process i'm going through i'm going from large to small so first that box and then i'm going to find that placement of the thumb and then i'm going to find a pattern for the fingers see like that and only then i'll, I'll put in the actual details and that can really help it's very hard to just draw these like if you try drawing the fingers one by one you'll get very nice sausages but 
it will be super hard to get something that looks good. You see, even for me, it doesn't matter your skill level. It's just a hard thing to do. There is a process that makes it easier. And you have to discover some of that process on your own, like see how it works for you, because everyone's gonna approach it a little differently, right? But that's kind of the way I would approach this scene. You can flatten this a bit to show that it's, his weight is on the floor, that, that can also be helpful. You see, even these pockets have a bit of waviness to them. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So let me see if there's anything else that's interesting that I really wanted to do. Oh, there was one with a dress with tons of detail. So let's see here if that's... Uh, that's the one I actually may have two more. Let's see and how long have we been going about 30 minutes Maybe a bit more. So this is really cool. Let's go for that So I decided to start with a fresh page just we'll make it a little easier. We don't need to torture ourselves uh, So yeah uh, Here's so the head is looking down and and so it turns into a circle more than an oval see kind of a very round and then this goes down looks down center line is around the center maybe looks a little to the left and then let's get the shoulders in very often you'll find it's not as visible here but the shoulders have a reverse pattern with the pelvis so if the shoulders go like this the pelvis goes like that uh, actually her pelvis is probably like that because if you look at the legs, uh, the, the her left leg, which is to our right, supports most of the weight. That side of the pelvis goes up. That's a very common pattern. And then if you want to exaggerate it, reverse the pattern on the uh, shoulders. And you'll, what you'll get is a stretch here and then a pinch here. If you really exaggerate it. We don't have to exaggerate it, but just saying something like that. Um, and again, I would have gone into deeper and more accurate anatomy had it been important, but we're all about the simplicity here and just having fun with sketching. Look at what happens to the arms. Um, they're approximately the same height, but they're doing very, like here, the, 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 the palms are approximately the same height, but they're doing very different things. So this one moves kind of, we're looking at it straight ahead. And then the other part moves a little towards us. See this pattern? And then the hand kind of goes down. That's that. But this one goes first down like this, kind of away from us. And then it goes straight at us. So we don't even see the lower arm. All we see is the, the hand itself. See? So it's a fun little pattern. Um, and then around here, a little under the palms, there's this piece of cloth that really bunches everything up and I want to make sure that I get that. So it's going to be something like this maybe. And then goes down and she's holding the dress so we get so many beautiful creases here. Maybe she'll let go of this side. Or maybe she's not holding, maybe that's just the shape of the dress. But I'm not going to put too much in here. I just want to get a basic understanding of what's going on. So this leg is going to be a little folded. Then this goes here. I barely put any any work into the pelvis. I should I shouldn't wing it as much, but that's fine. Something like that maybe. And then this leg goes here and down here. And this one you see it stays straight, taking up most of the weight here. So maybe something like this, but very basic. And I I didn't even measure the proportion. So let's see. This should end up there. So maybe a little taller. Maybe not. Doesn't matter. We'll keep this one simple for now. I want to actually focus on the folds and creases here. It's much more important. Maybe I'll just go over the clothes here. So it'll give you like a transparent layer uh, for this stage, which is gonna be fun. So notice what happens here. We get a lot of waviness as the cloth, which is very thin by the way, bunches up. And that's the key here. The cloth is so thin that you get all of these tiny actually uh, folds in it and that's what I love about these kinds of clothes or Dacron kind of um, you know shirts white shirts whatever it is they really um, they really get into so many random creases like this but notice how they're following the pattern like that a lot of zigzaggy action here in the chest area uh, it really mimics the shape of the body underneath it, and it is something you have to account for, right? That's the that's the basis for learning anatomy. But sometimes you can get away with just this kind of simplification, just doing a couple of scribbly lines. Let me zoom in a bit. So yeah, sometimes you can really get away with fewer details here. Uh, this goes here. 
And if you're studying anatomy, I'd actually encourage you to use, you know, pictures, nude models, because then you'll actually see something. Uh, but we're not really doing that here. I'm more focused on the clothing, so we don't need that. But but it, it does make it a lot harder to figure out the anatomy underneath it, too, honestly. I could try, you know, it could be fun maybe to do another iteration and actually think about it more. Um, but yeah. And then here, I don't exactly know what this is made of. But it looks like it's almost it almost stays up like that. So maybe it's a special material. Maybe there's wires in it that make it stay like that. Or it could be just a picture taken in the right moment. So we we don't know. But what we do know is look at this direction. It really is uh, consistent. And then inside it, we have a lot of these kind of curves that, that uh, curved lines and and uh, things that come out from this tension point. Okay. They come out of a tension point. This is a tension point. So things come out of that. They lead into it and they come out of it. Under the belt, especially, you're going to get so many of these. And you see how much you can get away with just by drawing these as scribbly shapes? That's really a really fun exercise in and of itself. I especially love these zigzags, right? Um, and by the way, we haven't added any light and shadow, but if you want to, you can start doing that. So start doing shadow mapping, like actually marking where the light and shadow are and then filling the areas in, kind of like that, and then taking care of the shadows within the shadows, but you don't have to do any of that, it's just for fun, kind of uh, quick sketches. Uh, so in any case, I hope this has been helpful, a lot of complex uh, reference photos, there was one simpler that I wanted to maybe save for later, let's see, let's get one more, just for fun, worst case you can stop the video, <laughs> stop watching. Uh, but in any case, I'll use that to kind of conclude. I hope uh, that uh, you're, you enjoy sketching and that you get enough time for that. I'm going to do it here. Um, and that you're able to put in the time you want. At the end of the day, you know, it's all about really exploration and putting in the time and intent to explore. Uh, if, you, if you care enough, you will take the time to practice and you will give it your all and you will try and learn. Uh, by the way, this cloth is really the opposite of the previous example. So that's actually a great follow up to that because it's thick. So you get fewer, uh, fewer folds and creases, which is really neat. I'm gonna get rid of the legs part here. I don't need them anymore. And this goes up to about here. I'm going off of, again, very few details because I kind of want to enjoy the inking part of it. Here we go, and then the belt, of course, the, yeah, it's kind of a belt for the, what is it, a trench, uh, and that goes here, that goes there, very long hairs, actually, I'll get, I'll get that in, uh, and then the few folds and creases, so let's try being a little more careful, maybe, here, let's try for the uh, folds and creases, actually. So, yeah, just what I was saying, um, it really is just about this being important enough so that you actually put in the time honestly and uh, it takes a lot of time in my experience to get a very deep grasp of concepts but that doesn't mean you can't improve very fast too um, you will start seeing results immediately um, but then the more you learn the more you understand wow there's so much I don't know you know now this curves around it's a rounded shape you see it's kind of this if it were transparent let me do this again. So if this was transparent, or maybe if we're, we're it's almost like um, this disc we're looking at from below. So the lines in the center that are facing towards us will have fixed distances between them, but they'll become thinner as they move away, you see? Like that. So the same thing happens here. As it curves away, these lines become thin, you see? They move away from us. Just something to have in mind. Now as for the arm, look at these very thick folds and creases. Very fun, I love portraying this kind of clothes uh, and materials. Here you won't get any, because that's the stretch point, but you will get uh, folds and creases coming out and towards this stretch point, as you see here. Some zigzag pattern sometimes. Uh, and then we have this beautiful kind of um, what, do you, what would you call this part of the cloth? I'm not sure. 
that wraps around and it is three dimensional so you want to make sure that it does look like that and this goes down here and you can even put this dip here for the seams because they're really really felt here and then it goes up and look it dips down and comes back from here you want to get all of these nuances right okay and then let's close this off and again if you're not going to put any shading here um, it's not going to be fully complete but I actually like that look at this here this is really nice very subtle crease but it looks very uh, interesting and then the hand holding that cup of coffee the belt we can actually add some light and shadow here the shapes are clear enough so let's do that um, it goes like this and you notice how many skills I utilize when I'm working on this I'm using gesture to get effective lines that have some dynamic sense of movement to them and then I'm using some anatomical knowledge to maybe guess what things I don't see uh, look like and then um, oh and I forgot to show you the leathery pattern from earlier <laughs> maybe we'll go back to that but you see I'm utilizing so many skills and it's important to understand that and don't stress yourself too much if you can I mean it's very hard to just don't stress yourself but uh, maybe just understanding that there are so many skills um, and it's it's built in layers upon layers upon layers that it's okay if things take time look at the eye at this angle it's such an extreme angle um, that it's okay you have a lot of skills to um, to internalize and compartmentalize and all of that so uh, made her look a little older with that uh, fold in the face but I knew it will happen so whatever uh, I can get rid of it by just using this by the way bye bye hopefully it's not as visible <laughs> uh, but yeah so now let's put in some uh, light and shadow I will then go back to the other one if, if it's interesting and, and put some there as well but I want to use this kind of a brush so the pattern is very clear light comes from this uh, from actually from the top right what am I talking about so I'll just put in some darks I'm not gonna map the shadows and really show exactly where they are but it goes under here you can edit the shadows to be more effective for example I can add and include this area of the sleeve um, you can change quite a bit but this entire thing is in the shadow so then you get this beautiful pattern zigzaggy all the way down to this fold and then if I fill that in even though it's not black in the reference photo you see it just gives it some volume immediately and that's a really nice effect um, and if you can connect the more the merrier you see connecting then this casts shadow down now you have to think about the shape so this goes down but this is, sticks out so maybe the shadow is gonna be mm, should it be here or there I'm now I'm not following but well, let's try it this way um, and let's actually have the shadow go like that and go back so now we can bring out some interest in this see this beautiful kind of negative shape there fill this area and this is everything in the shadow so we can just kind of fill that in see my brush is getting a little empty but you see how it gives it some kind of volume you can do the same for the hair you can do the same for these shadow under this thing under that thing under the creases here maybe here maybe even the bottom of the face if you really want some dramatic light and shadow there's a lot of ways to do that uh, the button I would just put a shadow under it like that maybe put a shadow on this part of the shape you see uh, but yeah it's not really about shading so what was it that I wanted to maybe add oh yeah yeah I wanted to get the shiny effect on this thing so let's wrap with this real fast uh, shiny 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 let's get the armor open the reference photo yeah so the shine usually comes from contrast so all you really have to do is put in those contrasts so this is black for example and then you get a very thin strip of lighter and then it's dark again and that's really it so I'm gonna start doing that here putting that dark and that sharp contrast see how it starts to look like metal and then here and here and here immediately makes it look more metallic 
and follow that shape of the metal. You see, so there's a shadow there, and then it goes lighter, and then it goes darker. See, that's that's really all there is. Now, you want to sometimes include the actual shadows that show. Uh, maybe this entire piece is curved and then the bottom is in the shadow, you know, uh, maybe there's a sharp shadow going through here um, Maybe there's a mini shadow going through there, you know, there's a lot you can do with it uh, Also with jeans and pants uh, very often you'll see where the, the pelvis area is uh, You'll see all of these folds and, and creases like that so that can really be manipulated to look like leather simply by going like this with zigzaggy wavy lines see it immediately takes the look of maybe leather or some kind of other material but my pen is running low so it's a bit hard to show uh, but actually I think I have an example here let me search for it real fast because I did it really recently there we go look at that just scribbles and it really works you just find a pattern of light and shadow and exaggerate it. Uh, but I guess I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's wrap it up. So real quick, just to conclude, I hope you enjoyed this one in this kind of a maybe talkative kind of sketch with me. Sometimes I just I really wanted to do this kind of a thing for myself today and I decided let's make this the video and save some time, honestly. Um, and doing this real time, I think both benefits people. They enjoy that aspect. And it also makes editing the video much faster for me. So in any case, thank you so much. Don't forget, you, you can check out my uh, drawing course and watercolor course. Link are, links are in the description box below if you want to learn how to sketch from observation, draw anything you see uh, and really get it and not even worry about anatomy and understanding the subject, but rather improve your observational skills. Check that. And also watercolor, if you want to learn how to paint, let go enjoy the process you can find a link to that let me know in a comment below also your thoughts anything that comes up that you want me to talk about or the, the questions i asked you earlier i'm curious about that too and i will see you again real soon